as SEC media days are getting up and going, I want to talk about Florida quarterback Emory Jones. And he's someone that we've spent a good amount of time on this channel, kind of breaking down his film, what he brings to the table, and kind of how he fits Dan Mullen's system. And and, and with that being said, uh, we've also talked a lot about Dan Mullen and his this history as a, as a quarterback coach and how he's been able to develop quarterbacks with different uh, tool sets and different skill sets uh, to be successful quarterbacks. So today, we're going to look at a few different clips and kind of look at what I think and how I think Dan Mullen will, one, use Emory Jones and why I think he's going to be a good quarterback in 2021. And it won't be like the videos we've done in the past. Some, some The past videos have been kind of pointing out Emory Jones' strengths and what he's going to do. Today, I want to focus on Dan Mullen and how I think he will be using Emory Jones in multiple ways uh, to be successful in 2021. And the first few videos we're going to look is from uh, 2018 Felipe Franks because I think there there's some similarities uh, between Jones and Franks. Obviously, different quarterbacks, uh, but there are some similarities in Dan Mullen used Franks in some ways to kind of open up passing games and to be successful as a runner. And I think we'll see uh, Dan Mullen do some similar things with Emory Jones, uh, but it'll be expanded upon. But before we dive into the actual film, I just want to encourage you to consider subscribing to our YouTube channel if you like any quarterback-related content uh, that's kind of just all we put out. So we're going to watch the first few clips are going to be a fleet by Franks, and then we're only going to watch five total clips today. We're going to, we're going to go into a, a little bit more detail and not be as broad about things. And so we're going to watch the first two clips of fleet by Franks, then we're going to see Emory Jones and how he can be a complete mismatch and help others be successful. And then we're going to see Jones as a uh, passer in the, pat in the last two clips and ha how he was successful in those two passes. So let's go ahead and jump into the film and kind of look at why I think and how I think Dan Mullen will use Emory Jones and why I think he'll be a successful quarterback in 2021. So here's a successful pass play by Franks in 2018 against Florida State. And I think it's a good example of uh, situations we'll see Emory Jones in and why I think he can be a very successful quarterback thrower and why I think he will be. Let's watch the play and then we'll break it down in a little more detail. Nice little RPO scheme right there, which I think is uh, Mullen's going to be able to use very effectively with Emory Jones, just like we saw with some Prescott and some Tebow. But let's go back and look at why this play was successful. And of course, Tebow and Prescott running different different systems, but uh, you know similar schemes. Okay, so anyways, so they have to be prepared for the run here. So pre-snap, we got seven guys in the box, and we got seven guys back here, uh, not including the quarterback. So it's seven on seven, essentially. Once this safety comes in, then we essentially have eight guys in the box. And so you can count them in the box, count them out of the box. I count them in the box for a simple fact. He's more involved in the run game than he is in the pass play. So when that happens, we have one, two, three. So we have eight on seven here taking away the quarterback so we have eight on seven and then we have three on three so we take that matchup he gets out of the way he is involved in the run game Franks, pull, Franks pulls it and throws it so I think the threat of Emory Jones potentially keeping it uh, lines up well in that type of play and I think we'll see similar stuff with different RPOs and kind of different play actions there that will help set up the passing game instead of throwing lanes like that let's watch this angle here so again we got one two three four five, six, seven, and then the safety creeps down. Oh, I'm sorry, this was seven, this was eight here creeping down. So we see when he creeps down, because the threat of potentially Franks could keep it in the run game, and then he's able to throw it where that safety probably should have been, leads to a big play there. So I think that's a good example of the type of uh, pass plays and what we, see, uh, what we see downfield from Jones. So here's a touchdown run by Franks, and I think it's a good example of what you will see Mullen do for Emory Jones while he puts Franks not only in a good position to throw when he throws it, but in a good position to run. So he's setting up Franks successfully, which I think we'll see Emory Jones do. I think we'll see Mullen set up for Emory Jones, uh, considering he is a good athlete and can make these type of plays here. But let's look at why this is a, such a good setup here, something we'll see Mullen do. So we've got five linemen on the, for the offensive line, and then we've got one, two, three, four guys down line, and so we've got a fifth. A uh, guy in the box. We only got five guys in the box, five guys to protect Frank. So it's five on six essentially. And what they do is they they send one guy downfield, have Frank's go, and ends up being a touchdown. So I think we'll see these situations uh, kind of line up for Emory Jones as well. And, and, and another thing to note here, all the DBs are covered, right? So that guy that essentially moves the backer out, and so the safety has to creep up and become the middle linebacker. You'll take this all day these five guys on these five guys because one of them is a safety so you'll take that all day great offenses a great offensive design by mullen here too just to go to get those receivers out there 
And so they see, okay, five in the box. We got five to protect, plus me as a, being the quarterback as a runner. I'm going to take this off. So I think we'll see these type of designs set up with Emory Jones as well. So Emory Jones creating mismatches in the run game, I think, is, is another attribute he brings that uh, I think is worth talking about. And this is from the 2018 bowl game against Michigan. And look, it's only looks like a it's a first down, but only looks like a you know 10, 15 yard play, which is a big play. But let's see why that happened. Because I think you'll see more and more of this these type of plays happen because of Emory Jones. So it's an option to the left. Let's see, we'll pause it real quick. Option to the left, so we have one, two, three, four, five. Uh, potential uh, blockers We've got one two three four five six guys in the box for Michigan so it's basically six on seven here and the free rusher picks Emory Jones uh, leaving this seventh guy with no one in the box to be accounted for and this is why the big play is able to happen good blocking downfield the free guy takes Emory Jones and then that leaves the running back uh, with plenty of room of course the DBs are manned up on the outside receivers so again we'll watch this so again, one, two, three, four, five, six guy here. And he is c coming to the running back, but the guard is is uh, assigned to block him. So the free rusher, the free guy is actually on the outside, leading to no one taking the running back. Good job blocking downfield. Good job by Emory Jones as well. Just creating mismatches in the run game as well. So here's a, a play I've used for Jones in previous videos we've done of him. I think it's a good job. I think it goes hand-in-hand hand with this video. It does a good job reiterating what we're trying to kind of present here. Touchdown there is just getting people out of position, putting defenders in bad positions. Touchdown. So we'll see if I go just a little further back. Just his threat to run puts people in a bad position, gets people here, gets people out of the way that he needs to throw to and then a good uh, good route by the receiver to get open there. So I think there's a good example, and this is kind of a good demonstration of what we'll see uh, and Dan Mullen's creativity. False step, gets him out of the way, touchdown. Here's a good throw downfield, Barry Jones. I, I think you'll see him be successful pushing the ball downfield and Dan Mullen's offense, and I think there's a few reasons why. One, I think he's a pretty good thrower. Uh, I think he's got a lot of ability. He's got a good arm, can spin it. And I think you'll see defenses really focus on some of the creativity that uh, Dan Mullen will be putting in and potentially forget that, you know, Jones can push it downfield as well. So we just see a good ball down here. Jones, uh, the slot receiver gets open. You can see what you're doing about the throw. He should have let him, whatever. But just remember, Jones was on the bench a lot of the game, just playing here and there. So coming in, uh, not cold, but, you know, not in a groove and able to complete a pass like this. Good ball downfield. So I do think we'll be able to see him push the ball downfield. Uh, I think defenses need to prepare for the yes, the, the, the creative plays Mullen will have, but just the uh, basic plays, uh, for lack of better terms, as well. They need to be able to defend Emory Jones pushing the ball downfield. Here's a good uh, clip or, or viewpoint here in the pocket. Back foot hits. Good throw there into a little window, and the receiver does the rest. So again, just a few clips, uh, about five total, and, and the, the clips with Franks I think was a good example of how Jones could be used uh, but expanded upon. So uh, the fact that we saw Mullen be creative and kind of spreading the field out, uh, get a, uh, an, an advantageous matchup for Florida where they were five in the box, six against Florida's guys, uh, and that, that set him to be a that set Felipe Franks to be successful as a runner. And then we saw the pass play as well, uh, kind of bring guys in the box where it was a mismatch on the outside that we saw the RPO scheme. So I think we're going to see Jones run a lot of successful uh, different styles of plays that Dan Mullen has to offer. And I think we're going to see Jones sit in the pocket and rip it too because uh, I think he can do that. So I'm looking forward to 2021. I know Florida fans are excited, but I want to hear from you. How do you think Jones will do in 2021? How do you think he will fit in Mullen's system? How will Mullen be creative and how will Mullen kind of just let Jones take over uh, in 2021? Let us know below and we'll see you next time on our next quarterback-related video.